Joining us on the phone line right now is Raul Rusi, Chief Executive Officer of Acacia Network. Welcome, Mr. Rusi. Gracias, gracias, Javier, It's por invitarme. Encantado. It's a pleasure that you're joining us this afternoon. Now, Mr. Rusi, um, what has been the response of, of people in the Bronx and all of New York City to this crisis in Puerto Rico? So I think that the response by uh, the Puerto Ricans here had uh, it's been exactly what you would expect when uh, they see that a family member is in trouble. And as you all know, um, Puerto Ricans here in the Bronx almost Uh, universally have relatives in Puerto Rico and the people in uh, Puerto Ricans in Puerto Rico have relatives here in, in New York, especially in the Bronx. So when our family uh, who was living in Puerto Rico was in crisis, we, we like all family members, tried to respond immediately. And uh, that's been sort of an ongoing process, at least for Acacia Network. On uh, the very morning that uh, the, the uh, storm hit Puerto Rico on my way, Uh, here, I, I reached out to my board of directors and asked them if they would consider me promising a million dollars to the relief effort of Puerto Rico and asking our friends and partners and family members to join us to match that million. And the board immediately said yes. Uh, the fund was up by the very next day, and since then we've collected uh, well over $600,000 in addition to the million dollars that we uh, committed to uh, support the relief of the, uh, our families in Puerto Rico. Any idea, Mr. Rusi, how will these funds be distributed or how will they be used? Well, we, we obviously uh, immediately looked at uh, what are some of the immediate needs that would be needed. And uh, since the uh, electrical grid was down, we knew that people were going to need generators. So we reached out to some of our vendors and began to put together a list uh, that we could put on uh, on a list to send to Puerto Rico. and. Uh, we, you know, our response brought 150 generators that we could send. Uh, but the difficult part was getting stuff to Puerto Rico, and it mm -hmm. continues to be a real uh, challenge. So we decided the other options. We're thinking, how can we connect with some of our partners, not-for-profits in Puerto Rico, and see if they could be helpful in identifying sources of some of the things that people needed. And in the beginning, it was food. Uh, immediately, one of the hospitals, children's hospitals, uh, was in need of getting food to the family. They had, they had food for the children in the hospital. The family stayed with the children during the hurricane. Now they were stuck there. They had no food for those families. So immediately we contacted a restaurant nearby and asked them if they would be willing to sell the food to us if we paid them. Uh, we worked with Banco Popular to set up an account in Puerto Rico. And uh, the, almost the same day, we, we got the, the, the restaurant to agree to deliver the food. We were feeding all the families of the filthy children and been feeding them ever since. So we found unique ways to work in Puerto Rico with uh, people there. We found a, a vendor that that, uh, that had some stock and we began to look at senior centers uh, and other places where people were in need of food and, and then created, asked them for a proposal. This was all done by using email and a, a little bit of the web uh, connections that we had. Mm -hmm. And we did connect with them and they, uh, they began delivering the food to to these centers and they had an account so they could buy the food and, and go back and cook it. So, you know, we found unique ways to, to connect while we were trying to figure out ways to get uh, the merchandise from Port to Puerto Rico. Recently, we finally got mm -hmm. uh, a plane load of supplies on there with 40 generators, some tarps, um, and other things uh, 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 that, that were asked of us. And, and, and what we've been doing now is asking unique communities uh, that we've uh, agreed to adopt Uh, what are their needs, and then getting those needs directly to them. But it still continues to be difficult. We have a ship container that we put on our ship now 10 days ago. The company uh, told us that they were going to have it there in a week, and now they're telling us it's going to take four to six weeks. Wow. And all our, we have 60 generators in there. We have uh, like 300 tarps. We have these uh, solar lights are all inside that container and may not even have left New Jersey yet. I know Acacia also runs, even though it is based in the Bronx, Acacia also runs some programs in Puerto Rico. How are those programs affected and how, what's happening with them now? So we have, we have a site that we're building 103 units of affordable housing in Toarta, Puerto Rico. We were about midway in the construction uh, of that project. Uh, we found out that look, obviously most of the construction that was being done was cement and steel. So we did take the crane down. We had two cranes on site, uh, one that we could easily lower. The other one was stand-up crane. We, it took us about a week to take it down. We took it down, 
and the site actually was in pretty good shape because, like I said, it's all cement and steel. However, the town of Tuarta is, uh, is in horrible shape, and we've been working with the mayor there uh, to get him some supplies to help with the people in Tuarta. So we connected with the mayor. We helped him by providing an account for so that he could use for the, the needy families in Tuarta, and that, that's actually been in place for a little while now. At this moment, uh, Mr. Rusi, what can people in the Bronx and all of New York do to help, if anything? To me, the, the main thing is to keep raising money because uh, this is going to be a long-term uh, uh, project. You know, we have set up a site, ayudapuertorico.com, donatepuertorico.com. You can either go to our, our, our acacianetwork.org site and see it, or you can go directly to donatepuertorico.com or ayudapuertorico.com and donate money. We promise everyone that every single dollar that is donated to the site will be, will be uh, used to help directly the people in Puerto Rico. And if anybody figures out any different, I'll give them back their money. We've already put up a million. We've got $600,000 that's been added to it. We're obviously spending that money to get supplies and work with the, the vendors in Puerto Rico. Uh, a lot of the donated stuff that's donated here and is put on on the Air Force planes, they go to the uh, the government site and they get distributed throughout the island. But we're focusing on some unique needs in Puerto Rico, and that's what we're trying to do is figure out where the most needy are and go there and try to deliver it to those people. We just had a group of nuns contact mm -hmm. us working with homeless women. They needed just things like sanitary napkins, just uh, toothpaste, toothbrush, things, simple, simple things uh, that, that people can't get because of the of the the issue about getting things into Puerto Rico. Thank you, Mr. Rusi, for joining us this afternoon. Uh, again, uh, the portal is ayudapuertorico.com or donatepuertorico.com. Thank you and congratulations to the, all the team in Acacia and you have a rain check to meet up with us again. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling us. We will, we will continue after the break.